Hi everyone, my name is Saoirse Duggan Madeira. My guest today is the author of Max and Ruby and the Timothy Goes to School books. My guest is Rosemary Wells. Hi, Rosemary. Hello, Saoirse. How are you? And hello, guests. I'm fine, thank you. Let me just hang on. I'm just going to close the door. Okay. Right. Okay, let's go. How are you yes. today? Sorry? How are you today? I am well, thank you. And look who's... I see. I see Max and Ruby little dolls there. Yes. I found, we found them in the charity shop a while back. Oh, you did. <laughs> are you ready for your questions? Yes, I am. Thank you. How did you start get, how did you get into re, how did you get into writing and illustrating? Well, it just seemed to be uh, what I uh, was meant to do. That's all. I was working for a publisher, uh, working in children's book design, and I thought perhaps I would uh, try my hand at it, and it uh, at it, and it uh, it worked out very well as a, as a very wonderful career. Why do you use animals rather than humans in your books? I use animals rather than humans because I draw them better than I do humans, number one. Uh, and as things have turned out, I also, animals can do things that humans can't do. You don't want to show a little girl jumping out of the branch of a tree and falling on top of a little boy, but you can do it if there are a couple of raccoons or bunnies or, or other animals. Animals can do funny things that uh, pictures of children cannot really do. So they give you a much wider range of emotional content than drawing children and they're funnier and they are also very universal. You don't have to worry what color an animal is. How do you come up with ideas for your books? This is a question that all authors get and all authors have different answers. Uh, when you are meant to do something, you have ideas. It's my job to have ideas. Uh, it's how I think. And in the same way that a musician or a singer, for example, is able to do things that uh, the rest of us can't do, uh, those of us who write stories simply have ideas because that's what we do. How did you come up with the idea for Max and Ruby? Max and Ruby were actually my own two children when they were seven and about three and a half. And uh, they, the way they worked and, and talked together was so fascinating and so funny. And I decided to do a book that had not been done before, which was a book about how children were when they were alone, not with the parents. And so uh, whenever people ask me, where are the parents? I have to tell them they're not in the stories. It's about Max and Ruby together. What have been your favorite books to work on? What are my favorite books to work on? What have Every been? Book. Excuse me? What have been your favorite books to work on? Uh, I would say the Mother Goose books and the Bi Voyage to the Bunny Planet, as well as Max and Ruby. All of my books are favorites as I work on them. How did you feel when your books were turned into animated shows and shorts? Well, on the one hand, it's good for business. On the other hand, no a uh, single studio can ever really uh, imitate or get right the works of any author or artist. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job and they did many, many episodes and that's not easy. So uh, I congratulate the, um, the Nelvana Studios for doing a terrific job with Max and Ruby. Why do you think reading is so important? Because if you don't read, you can't think. If you don't read, you're not open to ideas that uh, other people may have. Reading encourages the brain to develop and without reading, you can't really function in the world uh, for yourself or for others. Reading is the number one requirement, not only for every job and career, but for every person 
who is able to uh, do critical thinking, to vote uh, intelligently. Reading creates intelligence and it creates a width, a bandwidth in the brain that nothing else can. Can I be honest with you, Rosemary? Yes. I haven't really been re reading as much as I used to when I was younger. Well, then how about listening to books on tape? I do do that, yes. Well, then those are books and it's just as good. And can I, also, do you remember how you, do you know in your first email that you mentioned Temple Grandin? Yes. I actually, I did mention her. I, She's I a actually, wonderful, wonderful person, writer, and spokesperson for people on the spectrum. I know that for sure because I actually interviewed her. Yes. And she was really, really nice. Isn't she? Yeah. It does terrific books. And the, she really cares about one thing that I care about enormously, and that is kindness to animals and uh, uh, decency in how they're treated uh, in the uh, abattoirs. And she devised an entire system that uh, it treats animals uh, kindly and humanely. And here's your last question. Do you have any tips for someone who wants to become either a writer or, or an illustrator? Well, I would say if you want to become a writer, you do a lot of reading and you do a lot of writing. You want to become an illustrator, you need to copy the illustrations of the people that you admire, the artists that you admire. I had many artists that I admired, but you have so many more in this generation. Look at their books carefully and copy what they do because in copying them, you will learn and becoming successful at anything is learning. If you read good writers, you'll learn to be a good writer. And I've also, I've also actually written my own books as well. They haven't been published. Me and my mom are still working on them. Oh, well, congratulations to you and the best of luck to you. Well, that's the, the, that's all the questions I have, Rosemary. It, all right, Sersha. Well, it was, you, sir, I have a question for you. Yes. Are you surprised that an American knows how to pronounce your name? Well, I thought you, because you said in the email, yes. Yes, because most Americans could not pronounce it, but I had an Irish grandmother. And so I am familiar with the, with the names. And uh, I think it's a beautiful name and I want to tell you that. Thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. It was very, it was great to talk to you. It was wonderful to talk to you and to the people watching your program. I wish you all the very best of luck. And thank, thank you, you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye.